In this video, we're taking a look at yet another sound pack here in GarageBand. That's right, it's one of our artist and producer packs, this time from Tom Mish. And we're going to dive in here and look at the loops, look at the samples, look at the keyboard sounds, and take a look at what you get get in this pack. As you can see here, more than 135 loops, three drum and beat sequencer kits, 10 keyboard patches, and a partridge in a pear tree. No, a live loops grid. Now, if you're not familiar with these, there is a video link down below. In fact, a whole playlist of videos so that you can jump in and check all these out. Because look at them. There's 10 of them. There's the Mark Ronson Watch the Sound Pack, the Lady Gaga and Dua Leaper Packs, which are live loops remix sessions. And then you've got these other seven artist and producer packs, which are all chock full of amazing sounds. To download them, all you do here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad is scroll over to the sound library, tap on that one there, and then all you need to do is tap one of the packs, hit the download button. I've already downloaded them, and then they'll be loaded and ready to go. So what we'll do is get stuck in and start using this pack to create some sounds. So this time around, we're gonna start with our loops. So we're gonna come in here to a brand new fresh track. We're gonna grab audio recorder. I'm gonna turn on monitoring so that you and I can both hear what we're doing here and go to our track view here. So let's just go in and explore some of the loops. If you're looking for Apple loops in these packs, we tap on this icon here, which is our loop icon, and we're here at Apple loops. Now, I'm gonna to have to do the filter thing here because I've, I've already filtered by the Tom Mish pack, but we're gonna come back out here and this this is what you'll be faced with when you start out. You know you've got it reset when the 60s shuffle drum set is the very top one there. So what we'll do, we'll filter these down to just this pack. We're going to tap this one. We're going to tap on sound packs. We're going to scroll down until we get to Tom Mitch, and we're going to click that one, and then filter by, back to Apple Loops, and here they all are. So check out this array of loops. Now, this time around, we don't have any MIDI loops, so but we do have all Apple loops. So we've got a whole heap of Apple loops that we can use here. So what I'm going to do is build out a bit of a beat using some of the loops here at random. We're then going to grab some of the sounds from the keyboard sounds. We're going to use the beat sequencer kit to kind of enhance some of these beats as well. And then we're going to go to the live loops grid and see if we can have a quick play around with that. So we're going to look at all four components of this. Right. Let's see what we got. What's a crunchy soul break? That sounds interesting. Yeah, that's pretty good. What about the deep feels? That's a really, and, and what, Mark, what uh, Mark says about it, Tom, Mark, Tom, Mark, what Mark says, <laughs> what Tom says about this pack is that there's a lot of sort of drier kind of sounds in here. So a lot of the, the drum sounds are a bit dry. In fact, before we get started, Let's pivot a bit here because I did want to show you this, which I almost forgot to show you. Uh, if you're not aware, you can come here to your sound library and you can tap on the packs themselves. So the Tom Mish pack here, there's a little video here. You can watch the whole video before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a little bit of this. If we go down here to about the one minute 49 mark, I love what Tom says here because this is very relevant for GarageBand producers. Let's take a bit of a look and a listen. A lot of people think they can't make music, but I think you can you can just have a lot of fun with it and, and get into it that way. And if you're having fun with it and you're you're messing about, then I think that's a good kind of way into it. And and with Garage Band there's so many options and there's so many different flavours and stuff you can just play with. I couldn't agree more. Tom, who I now will only call Tom, not Mark in the future. But yeah, it's really cool to hear these producers say exactly that. And look, let's be honest, these guys aren't necessarily using GarageBand on the regular, on the daily, but the fact that they've been able to produce these packs and we can now use their sounds here in GarageBand is pretty darn cool. And pretty much all of them have said they love GarageBand, if not as a main production, but at least as a sketch pad for their music. Now, I'm loving this funk. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to use some of these deep uh, deep feels I reckon the deep feels yeah we'll go the deep feels soul break and even though it's a break I reckon we just use this to build out our, our loop here we're just going to create an eight bar loop here today we're going to go very simple or do we go now we'll go eight bars we'll do it re, we'll cram everything here into eight bars so we're going to use that as our first half and then let's just uh, change it up a little bit shall we so we'll take it from there and then. And then we'll use the, the O3. So we can bring these two together and uh, the transition between them. So 
So it's going to be a pretty heavy sound there. So we may need to reduce the volume. Again, we slide out our panel. If, you've not, if you're new to GarageBand, we'll slide out our panel, drop that volume back a little bit. And while we're here, let's delete this track because we don't actually need that one. All right, let's, uh, let's start building this with some more loops here. We, we had some uh, sax chords. This sounds cool. Yeah. Come on, that's cool. So we're going to bring these in, drag them in to that. So now we've got this eight bar loop and it's going to do this to start with. It's going to build us up. We'll bring in another instrument here doing something like funky. I reckon that's pretty cool. So uh, we'll, we'll leave the sax in there. Uh, what have we got that we can bring in sort of in the second part here? We can maybe some sort of uh, topper. Am I, maybe not. Maybe a tambourine break. No. Yeah. What's the uh, look? That's kind of cool. But oh, there's, there's too many things in here. For I'm going to get super excited here. You have to keep me on track. Maybe the easy going hi-hat topper. Let's bring this in from that number two bar. So that this way we're... Kicking it in here with the funky break. We're going to add the topper. Yeah, and maybe we don't need the topper for the rest of that. So maybe we just bring that in here to enhance it as we go through there and pop it down like that. We won't add any more uh, drum sounds because we do want to use our beat sequencer. But what about some bass? Let's see if we can find some bass loops in here that are going to work for us. Um, and if we don't, well, guess what? We can use a bass, but uh, we'll try here. Oh, that's a very low. That's a that's a that's a sexy bass. Um, is it going to work for this one? Maybe not. Uh, you don't forget if you if you are looking for just bass, you can actually search it. So if we come here and we search for a bass, see we don't have a whole heap of bass in here, but let's just see. That's pretty cool. Or this one. As if we as if we can't use some slap bass. Come on, the listen up electric bass. Let's bring this on here and uh we'll bring this in from this section here so we It doesn't really fit with it sadly. Um what we'll do is instead we'll make the bass come at the start here before we hit our rhythm. No, it just doesn't fit the groove. And this is what you're going to find. You're going to play around with things. Some things will work and some things won't. It's why I don't just predetermine exactly what I'm going to use here because then you'll be like, oh, that's cheating. This one might be better. Let's bring this, uh, this one in here instead. The Midnight Moves. That's better. Yeah, see that one was made to go together. Now, while we're changing things up here before we get too far into this, let's change this up a bit because I want to move the key signature here and maybe change the tempo. This is something I recommend. Patrick talked about this in a recent video over on the GarageBand guide. And uh, it's, it's a good habit to get into. If you're using loops especially, change the key, change the tempo. Otherwise, your song's going to A, sound like everyone else's, and B, be susceptible to copyright claims. We don't want either of those. So this time, let's bring it up to E. I, I don't do a lot of stuff in E. Uh, and even though it says major, it's probably E minor because it's probably a minor key sort of loop as we can hear here. So let's... Uh... So that's okay, but this bass now sounds a bit way too down low. So we'll go to our settings and maybe we will bring this bass up. Uh, we'll bring it up an entire octave because remember, we can play around with this stuff here because we're using loops. That's better. That's cool, right? There's our little hi-hat topper going in there. And then we hit our sax. This, this second break here is not working for me. So we're actually going to delete that and we're going to loop out that first one because I didn't like that change up there. We want it to be smooth transition. Right. 
right? That sounds cool. I like it. We're going to move on because that's our Apple Loops. Let's move on to our beat sequencer and drum kits. So to do that, we're going to hit the plus button down the bottom here. We're going to scroll on across to our drums. Went the wrong way, always do. And we'll start by using a beat sequencer kit. And what we can do here, if you haven't used this before, if we tap in the bottom left here, we can go to our recently downloaded, we can go to our Tom Mish kits here. We've got a GoGo -Go Funk, Lo-Fi Funk, and Uptown Flow. Not Uptown Funk. <laughs> that was already taken. Let's take a listen to the Lo-Fi Funk. That's not bad, right? That's a pretty cool sound that will kind of go nicely with what we've got here as a bit of a bass beat to go along, but it's probably going to have too much going on. But you know what I really like? I like this, uh, the snare and the click sound. So what I'm actually going to do, and you can do this here in the beat sequencer, you can remove anything you want, and I'm just going to remove all of these. Whoop, not, didn't want those two gone. So I actually want a pattern more like this. except I don't want that on the second one. So all I'm going to do is record in the first bar of this. So we hit the record button. It's going to play this first bit. That's it. So that's all I want is that those two bars, and then we're going to, sorry, that one bar, and then we're going to loop it out. So we're going to tap there. We're going to hit loop. And then that's going to go all the way through. So it's just going to add. Let's bring it up so that we know where all of our stuff is. This is going to be our drum. This is our drum section at the top here. So if we remove our other instruments, this is what our drum's going to be doing. So we've added in this bit with a nice click. There's our original kit. And again, we just have that little topper just here leading us into our, into our sax. Right? Beautiful. Love it a lot. Uh, so let's move on to our next thing. Uh, we'll go back to our beat sequencer kit uh, this time. In fact, let's go to the regular drums. So the way you can also use these new drum kits is to come in here to more sounds and instead of selection, I'll go back to the main just to show you how to get here. From your front here where you've normally got your acoustic and your electronic, if you go recently downloaded, you can come down here to Tom Mish. This time let's go with the Uptown Flow and see what sort of sounds we got in here. There you go. I reckon this shaker, and maybe even that sound there, but I reckon in the second half, we want that shaker to come in on the one and three beats. So let's just hit record, and we can bring the shaker in here with a bit of... Love it. Sorry, drinking coffee while I'm playing along here. <laughs> and yeah, we've got some comments in the chat here saying, yeah, you, you don't have to you don't have to have a whole lot of knowledge of music or theory or the keys or anything to create music in GarageBand. You truly don't. You can experiment. And some people will say, oh, you're just mixing and matching different loops. That's not real creating. I would beg to differ. I think that there's some real creative flair. And as soon as you start adding vocals and your own key sounds, as we're about to do in a moment... I think you can actually really create something that's cool. So we've we've done that now. We'll bring uh, this one up again by tapping and holding and dragging it up. We can now have these first four tracks are our, our drums, our beat, and then we've got our saxophone here and our bass. Let's just bring our bass up here because we want that to be there like so. And uh, we, we've started building this out. So we've used the Apple Loops. We've used the beat sequencer and drums. Let's use us some keys now, shall we? So to add keys, we hit the plus button and we go to, not surprisingly, the keyboard. If we tap on more sounds in the bottom right hand corner here, we can go back to our main categories. Once again, recently downloaded Tom Minch, Minch, changing his name every time. Sorry, Tom, Tom Mish. And uh, look at all these keyboards. Now, what we make up in quantity by quality with these ones. We only have, I think it's like 12 or 10 even keyboard patches in this one, but they are all absolutely epic. So I'm going to go through and actually play almost all of these for you. But the first one I want to play you is probably not going to work for this jam, but it is one that just before I did this show, Patrick over at the Garage Band Guide or the Garage Band Guide, because Patrick was very happy that Tom actually pronounces it correctly. Garage Band, not Garage Band as I do. But he said, you got to try the ghostly reversed organ. And Patrick will have a video out just tomorrow about this very pack. So if you think this is cool, you'll be able to check out Patrick checking it out tomorrow. Uh, so this is the ghostly reversed organ. And hold on to your hats here, folks, because take a listen to this. Lift 
my fingers. What? <laughs> it is perhaps a, it's perhaps the coolest sound. Uh, Patrick said, you've got to try this sound. Like, seriously, it is the, one of the best garage band sounds I've ever heard. And I, it instantly makes me want to make like a horror movie soundtrack because you can just hear... Right? And then the teenager gets stabbed. Weep, weep, weep. <laughs> it's a really cool sound. Is it going to work in a funky tune like this? No. But could it be an amazing pad for an atmospheric piece? Heck yeah. That is one of the coolest sounds going around. So I could have done the whole video just on that. <laughs> Here's a cool sound. But we've got some other things in here. I'll play these through real quick so you can just check them out. We've got a deep bass Tynes electric piano, which is... That's a cool sound. That one might work for a bit of a bit of a lead part in this one. We'll see. We've got the deep dive electric piano. Very cool. We've got a dreamy smooth vox. We clearly should have made it like a horror piece because there's so many cool sounds in here. We've got the organ that we've played. We've got the phasing guitar plucks. We've got a small amped acoustic piano, which we can... Uh... Very cool effects on that one. I dig it. We've got the smooth echo clav. Very sort of Stevie Wonder kind of sound there, but... But with some pretty cool delay on that one uh, by default. We've got a spaced out synth. Which is cool. We've got the sweet overdrive kalimba. Seriously, it's it's all here for horror music. <laughs> and we've got the West Coast analog synth lead. So if there's not a sound amongst that that inspires you, it's not their fault, it's your fault. Because there's so much cool stuff in there. Let's just take a listen to this. And I just want to try and find an instrument that might work in here. So, so I'm thinking maybe... Something like this, uh, what was that, Times one? Maybe the first one. This yeah, that's what we want. So in this second path, we need it to be a bit louder. But we want to play like a little uh, a little part, a little bit, something, uh, something like this. Yeah, don't you reckon that'll go in nicely? So we'll uh, we'll come here to the right bar, and I'm just going to come over off mic for a moment. I'm going to try and play this in. Wish me luck. All right, I think that might be a jam. What do you think? Stop that there, and uh, we'll come back over to here. Uh, Deep Gravity is in the chat here saying, it's remind me of an old PlayStation game called Driver. Yeah, it's got a bit of that 70s vibe. And I know Driver had that in its... Uh... <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now I think we need some sort of other instrument here to do a bit of a, like a, 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 um, a chord stab. Something like that. So again, we'll go back into our more sounds. Maybe this small amped acoustic piano could do it. Something like that. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll come in here and I'll just I'll do a bit of practicing. And then when it comes in here at that bar five, we'll see if we can find something like this. Now, I played some very wrong notes in there, but I did that on purpose. Sure. <laughs> I did that to show you how we can actually, uh, we can do this. Uh, oh, funky guitar. All right, I had an idea for, I've had a suggestion for funky guitar. I'm going to do that next. Good, good call. This is why we do this live. We're doing it live. Uh, so we've got this here. 
We've got our keys and we've got our little piano sound there. So let's just see if this works. Now what I'll do, what I like to do with this sort of stuff is let's just get rid of the beat so we can just focus here on the melody and the harmony of this. <laughs> So here, that that last chord there, I played a D minor chord. This needs um, this needs the we'll go to edit here. This needs a D major chord at the end there. So this last chord that I was playing here. So where are we? Do it, do it, do it. So here that that's got to that's got to go up a semitone. So here's why Garage Band and MIDI is cool, because we can change any note we like. Right? Nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we've got some, some wah guitar suggestions, maybe using the mouth wah. Yeah. Maybe we need to do that. It's not part of the pack, but maybe we need to do it anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have... We do have a guitar instrument in here, don't we? One of these was a guitar but it's probably not going to do it. It's just phasing guitar plucks. You know what I think? I think that maybe these phasing guitar plucks could work with like an arpeggiator. And we haven't used the arpeggiator in this yet. So what we can do, we can click on or tap on this button here. We can turn on our arpeggiator. And if we... Hmm, it doesn't like it. <laughs> That's a bit weird. It's not working. It's not working with our arpeggiator. That's really bizarre. For whatever reason, the way this uh, the way this sample is created doesn't work with our arpeggiator. That's okay. We'll abandon that. <laughs> Apple bug report doesn't work with arpeggiator. I wonder if it's the same with all these instruments or if it's just that one. Let's just have a quick... Let's turn the arpeggiator on here. That's weird. Anyone else ever... Anyone exp experiencing issues with arpeggiators on these packs? I don't know. Uh, maybe it does need to be a guitar loop then that we can add in here. We'll, we'll go back. So we'll take one quick step back and look at guitar loops because surely there's some funky guitar loops here in this pack. So we're going to go guitar. If not, we should go over to the Mark Letary pack. All right, so here we go. Uh, we've got Feel the Flow guitar lead. That's it. That could even go at the start, don't you reckon? So we'll grab that. We'll sla slag it. We'll slide it in here. This could be like our intro that comes in before this goes in. Let's just see if this is going to work for us now. So. Yeah, that's gold. All right, and uh, there was another one. So there was Feel the Flow, flow um, uh, guitar chords. So maybe they come in here after that. Maybe we have the guitar going all the way through. How's this going to go? See, I don't. I think you. I think you play the guitar again. I think you loop that. I think you loop it again, and the, the, that way it just comes in here and it does the. Like... Right, man. That's that's some that's some cool that's some cool jam there. I think this is a great pack. Uh, it's definitely escalated up to, if not my favorite, right up there in my top two or three packs of these new updates. Uh, very, very cool stuff. So that is the basis of this. Let's just do a, uh, a quick, actually, before we do, we'll do a mix at the end. Let's jump into the live loops grid. Don't forget, this is track view mode. If you, Even if you're out of your comfort zone a little bit here in track view, what you can actually do is jump over, just delete that track, you can jump over to the live loops mode. So if we click I'll just show you that again. If we tap on this button here, your little instrument selector, and up the top here, we go from tracks to live loops. Then we can actually come over here and we can find the Tom Mish live loops grid. There it is. 
called click tap on that one. I never know whether they click or tap because I use a mouse, but you're probably using your finger. So here we have all of our different live loops and yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. So we can actually use these and again, you've got your loops. So that'll play like your lo-fi funk there. You can build it up. There's a glockenspiel. Oh, I like that. There's your tambourine. And you've got uh, the piano. Oh, that's cool. And what these are actually using is they're using the loops and they're using the sounds that are actually in the pack. So you can add in your own. I've showed that in previous videos where you can hit the plus button, you can add in, you can edit by using this button down here. There's a whole bunch of videos about live loops and how to use them here on the channel that you can check out. But for our intents and purposes here, I liked that little glockenspiel. We're missing a little bit of high-end stuff. So maybe we just use some of this. Yeah, so we'll do that. So we'll, uh, and then maybe we'll go to the next one. So we'll hit the record button here. We're going to tap on this one. It's going to light it up. And then we'll tap this one here. Not bad. So we'll come back here to our track view and you'll notice that this records it in right here. And what I did notice is that that first time around, it was a little bit off timing. So I actually want that a bit later. So what we can do, don't forget, you can chop up your loops. We use the split option here. So I'm going to tap on here, hit split, split this one down. Now I can grab the end here and shorten it down to there and move this loop. So I actually want this to come in right here on this three bar. So I want it to be here. Don't you think that sounds way better? And uh, we probably do the same thing with the second time around here. So again, we'll move it, we'll grab it, we'll chuck it down here. And then when it comes in with this stuff. Bit too early on that one, needs to go to there. Doomp. Oh, it was, a, it was a half a beat later there. I actually don't mind that. So we're going to go with that and keep it there. So that's how you can incorporate your live loops from your live loops grid right here into your regular track view. Is there anything else that we thought was cool? Maybe the tambourine, because we don't have any tambo in this one. What does this tambourine do? Yeah, I reckon a little tambourine in the background could actually work for this. So hit record and it's going to throw in... Stop button there, come back to our track view mode up in the top left here, grab this one that we have here and just loop it on out. Boop, and we'll put some tambourine all the way through. So that is it. That is using all the different things. We've used Apple loops here. We've used the keyboard instruments. We've used the beat sequencer and drum kits. We've used the live loops grid. And that's all four things. So now what we can do is mix this together. So as I've been doing throughout, what I'm going to do is put all of our instruments that are related to our drums up the top. So let's uh, let's firstly mix our drum beat. So by bringing these together, just to get a good balance here. And what I'll probably want to do, so because we've got like a cup, we've got this topper here, we've got this topper here, we've got some different things going on here. We'll keep our two drum kits down the middle, but let's just sort of move this uptown flow because we can start doing some, some panning here. So let's sort of pan this one over a bit to the right, shall we? Let's bring our little topper here over to the left and let's bring these ones. Let's just go far right, just so that we get a little bit of a different feel here. And here now we're getting a much bigger stereo spectrum with all this stuff. <laughs> We've still got things playing over here on the live loops grid. Stop it. Stop it. This is the problem when you start using live loops and track view together. It's why I don't do it too often. And then we can start bringing things in. Now, your bass you probably want down the middle. So uh, we'll just see if we can balance this bass. We want a little bit more of that. That there. All right. That's sounding nice and balanced. And then we'll bring in our saxophone and see if we can balance this one here. I think this is probably... Yeah, so let's put our sax on one side 
Again, we can go saxophone. Let's do some heavy panning here just to show you the effects we can go here. We'll put our, that on this side. We'll put our piano chord. No, piano will, the, the lead piano will stay in the middle. We'll put our piano chords on the other side and uh, we'll see how this all comes together. <laughs> We oh, nearly lost it. <laughs> and then we all we got left to put in here is our funky electric guitar. Which will probably keep up the middle. Can you hear how we're getting those cool like topper sounds just moving around a little bit, creating some stereo space? And then our glockenspiel here is the last instrument that we just need to make sure it's in the mix. And what we're going to do, because you can hear that there's a hi-hat topper over on the right, we're going to throw this glockenspiel over onto the left, just so that we can have like some nice variation here. The, the one thing I don't like is that last little guitar lick that we have here. It doesn't really fit in the tone that we're going with. So we're actually just going to split that out and remove it for our final production here. So now we can unsolo all these because we've just built up. So just wanted to show you a little bit. Once you actually bring things together, it's important to mix it. And the one final thing I'll say here is when you're mixing a lot of loops and a lot of sounds like this and you're playing it back... See how loud things are now? See our meter up here? That's going to cause problems when we export because it's going to start clipping. So I show this trick a lot, but I'm going to show it here again. If we hit the FX button here and we just hit record, we're just going to record in anything. So it doesn't matter what you do there, just so that we have something on this FX track. And then if we scroll on down, we can delete out the FX, tap it, tap delete. But what the FX track has is its own visual EQ. So you can EQ your entire track, including a gain dial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain this down, maybe 10 dB, because now what that'll do, when we come back up to here, we'll turn the FX off there, we come back up to here, we can now play it and see it's down here. Now that may be a little bit too heavy handed, so we can come back to here, but less is more. When you're exporting it, less is more. So we'll bring it back up and just drop it maybe like 5 dB instead, and then we're getting... That's a better spot for it to be sitting here. So that's what you want to use if you want to reduce down your volume. You could, of course, come here and drop everything down, but I tend to find that painful and tedious. And if you've got the balance right, no individual track is clipping. So none of these tracks themselves, if you look at the tracks, none of these are getting up into the red. They're all fine. But the combination of all of them is bringing it up into the red, or the or the yellow in this case. <laughs> See, GarageBand doesn't even have a red. It's got like a yellowy orange when you're clipping or peaking. So there's that. So let's uh, let's go out now. This is the Tom Mish pack. It is very cool. Check it out and all the other videos for all the other packs down in the description if you want to check those ones out as well. There's a whole playlist where we've covered every single one of these. We've got one more to go. If you're in the future, we've probably covered that one too. So check out all the other links down in the description uh, and I'll see you next time. Let's do it. Yeah, girl. Kick in that sax. <laughs> <laughs>